Hello, I'm Maria from the Richardson Simple Living. Today we're going to, um, you have to excuse me, Sean's putting faces in the background. I might just swing around so you can see her. That's Doctor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I say, today we're going to discuss um, GCSEs. Um, somebody did ask me recently about GCSEs, what Sean was going to be doing for GCSEs. Well, Sean doesn't want to do any exams, doesn't want to do GCSEs. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> in fact, so last year when she was in primary school, because she was schooled in school before I did home education, um, she was due to take a SAT and because of all uh, the lockdowns and everything, the school closing, she didn't get to do them. And she was mightily relieved and she's actually behind me going, well, behind you, not behind me, the world behind me. <laughs> it's just behind you going, yeah. <laughs> but no, Sean doesn't want to do exams. She just doesn't feel happy with them. Um, she doesn't really, well, she does follow some curriculum lessons, but she doesn't follow all of them. She does some key stage three work, but also like with the maths, she's no good with numbers i have to excuse me keep doing that my fringe is going in my eyes these cutting um she's no good with numbers um she doesn't understand numbers she doesn't recognize big numbers i mean sean's got interests like she can tell you facts and figures of like the army, um, people who died in the wars, and she could number all sorts of people, but she couldn't write it on paper because she can't work out, to, out, out how to write the long numbers. So she does have um, like a deficiency, I was going to say, but when she was at school, they did say about, it's the word dyscalculia, dyscalculia, or something like that it is, and it, it's a bit like dyslexia, where you have the number, um, word blindness, sorry, but dyscalculia is the one where you've got the number blindness. So um, they were going to do tests on her and nothing ever became of it. They didn't do it. So if I was to do it now, I'd have to pay to have those tests done. So uh, we're not too worried about it. We just play to her strengths. To me, as long as she can add up, take away and do some times tables, that's fine but anyway um as a result of that she obviously won't be taking gcse maths she's fine with english fine with history and quite a few other lessons um but she doesn't at this moment in time she doesn't want to take them well she's year seven she's um 12 coming into 13 well coming in 13 the end of september she'll be 13 um so at this moment she doesn't want to do any GCSEs which isn't a problem I'm happy with that but because somebody had asked me what do you do what well what was I going to do that's at the moment that's what I'm going to do but the options that are there I thought I'll discuss what options there are so um, some people choose to tutor the children at home um, it might be for certain lessons because we were thinking about getting the tutoring for maths and doing the rest myself um, some people tutor for all the lessons, have a tutor for all of them. Um, you only need about half an hour with each one because obviously one-on-one -on -one is more intense than being in a classroom full of children. So some people do that. They'll have um, tutors for a couple of the lessons each week to keep them along with the curriculum with school. And that's fine. Others do online courses. Um, they take courses from 5 to 18 years old. Uh, there's the Pearsons, but the one I've seen a lot of is Wolseley Hall, Oxford. That's all right. If you see me looking down, I've wrote the notes to remind me of these names. Um, they do courses from 5 to 18 years and they do the IGCSEs. Um, they're just international GCSEs and they are recognised just about everywhere I think so they do them now the downside to that is obviously if you're a homeschooled student and you're doing your coursework whether it's through tutor or whether you're doing it online you've got to find somebody who will assess the coursework 
for your child and also you're responsible for finding the exam centre that will take external students. I think we're wobbling a little bit, Sean. Sean's behind me drawing, but as she can tell that I'm wobbling a bit. Um, yeah, so you're responsible for that then, which obviously means cost as well. You're responsible for the cost, not just the finding of these places and people. Because if you're doing online courses or doing it through tutor following a course, You've got to find somebody who can assess your coursework because that makes up part of your GCSEs and also you've got to sit the exam. So it can be very costly. Um, I think it varies for different exams and what you need. I don't know all the prices and obviously with time shells the age prices will have changed anyway. But yeah, there are more online academies than just the Pearsons and the... Um, Orsley Hall, Oxford. I have seen others and I think they're all pretty similar when you do your online courses. But like I say, if you're doing GCSEs, you are responsible. Same with A-levels, if you're going on to do them as well. But you are responsible for the GCSEs. Sean, I am wobbling. <laughs> this is not turned out to be a very good serious vlog, is it? <laughs> so yeah, um, so that is something to bear in mind, the cost of that as well. Um, I mean, these centres, some people might be looking, they might be close by, but I was looking into the closest exam centre that will take an external candidate. And it's miles and miles and miles away from where I live. It's right, it's public school. A lot of them are public schools that take them. And it is quite a long way from me, so. Although I can get there, but it is it isn't on my doorstep, not like your schools and colleges are. So then we go on to colleges actually. Um, like if you've not done a coursework, if you've not got any GCSEs, um, going to start a work, start a course at college. Quite often they do want you to have GCSEs to be able to get onto the course or a lot of students have come out of school and not got the qualifications to stay on into the sixth form and probably need to like get extra maths, English, they've perhaps um, failed at them, got fails. And so they need to do that again. So then they're normally allowed onto a course and they can run the maths and their English alongside of it to gain the GCSE that way um, and again um, no quite a lot of them do do that actually I was thinking some quite a lot do I know lots and lots of people who have done it that way and you don't even if like after the first year you've not gained the qualification for the GCSE in college you can you have your assessment you go on to the next one to the next part of the course and you redo the exams again. Um, I think my nephew, I'm not sure if he did it two or three times, but they allowed him to continue and run his maths and English GCSEs alongside of his course, which is pretty good. Um, if you've never ever sat for anything, so I'm talking about like now people who have actually sat an exam where they've come out of school and done the exam and failed or whether they've took, taken it externally and not passed it. Um, if you've never ever done anything, no GCSEs, say like Sha now, if she doesn't go ahead and do them, can she go into college? Well, yeah, you, you can. It's not quite as easy, but you can do it. Um, they'll normally assess you and they'll see if they feel that you could perhaps achieve your GCSEs. It is normally maths and English they seem to focus on. I think they do others, but they seem to focus with um, sort of 16 to 18 year olds with the maths and English. But yeah, they'll go and assess you. You can go and get assessed and they'll see whether they feel that 
it is worthwhile you doing their course and running your GCSEs alongside of it and doing it then. So I think a good idea probably would be if by the time you get to like year 10 and your child is turning around saying, I want to go to college, it might be a good idea maybe to um, get a tutor in just to polish up the maths and English. Some children do it no problem, but like Sean, I would have to get one in to bring them up to where they need to be for GCSE level. So you could go into your assessment at college and say, well, actually, yeah, I've not taken the GCSE, but I've done coursework. I've done this, that and the other with the tutor. I am up now to where I more or less need to be. And I could, you know, do the course and the GCSEs together. I would be able to do them. So there would be that way around of doing it as well. Um, I mean, we talk about college and you can put yourself through college independently at any age, can't you? Uh, I know um, people who've changed careers and gone off to college and just started doing something totally different and they've never had to have GCSEs to do it or nothing. You just have to pay for your courses, pay it all independently and... She don't get on free once you get past 18, I think. So you have to pay for it. So you can go into college and do things then. Um, do all jobs require GCSEs? Thinking further afield, if you don't get any GCSEs, do all jobs require them? Well, no, they don't. I mean, I've looked up a few jobs to see just as an example and I've got construction, retail, hospitality, beauty and animal care. I mean obviously not vets and things like that but animal care as in pet sitters, dog walkers, groomers, animal boarders, you know, you don't need your GCSEs for that. Um, There's lots and lots of jobs that you don't need GCSEs for, lots. And I mean, people say, oh, well, they're not very good jobs, are they? They're sort of menial jobs. But during this pandemic, 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 people like your shop workers and your lorry drivers, they were essential workers. They were needed. They were important workers. So they are important workers. They're very important. Um, they keep the country going and keep us all fed. They are important. So there's no such thing as menial work. If you're working, no matter what job you're doing and you're earning money and you're able eventually to put a roof over your head and when you have a family, feed your family, that's brilliant. That is top. That's brilliant because that's what you need to be able to do. There's nothing menial about that. That is an achievement. That is good. So um, thinking about some of these jobs, uh, you can get apprenticeships for them and you can go on to get NVQs. Now that's quite a good area because a lot of older people do things like that as well. Um, you can get some fantastic career opportunities simply by doing that. If you can find somebody who's willing to take you on as apprentice and teach things, and at the end of the day, you're able to get an NVQ from it, that's brilliant because I'm not sure how it works, but I think so many NVQs amount to so many GCSEs and something like that, but you haven't had to sit and take the exam for them because a lot of it is all your hands on, they teach you hands-on things um, yeah because a lot of people say they can do things but they can't put pen to paper I've got a son like that um, he's got ADHD he didn't do well at school at all in fact he had to go to a special school because he couldn't deal with mainstream school and they couldn't deal with him as well um, and He's got no exams whatsoever, but he can walk onto a building site. He can pick up the blueprints and he can read that blueprint and he can go and build whatever building as that blueprint has designed. And he can go and do that, know exactly what he's got to do right to the, the last 
you know, let it. He can do it. And yet he cannot barely write his name. He can only just write his name. He cannot write words. You have to guess what he's trying to write. But you give him a blueprint, stick him on a building site, and he teaches others how to do it. He can tell others and he can do it no problem. So there are people who can do, but not necessarily put pen to paper. So you don't need your GCSEs, whether it's because you're not able to get them or whether it's because um, you don't want to get them. They're, they're not the end of everything. There is a whole world out there full of opportunities. Now, I like, um, I thought, take a look at Richard Branson. There's an example. And everybody thinks, oh yeah, but that, that's some rich person and everything. But how, how do you think they got there? It wasn't handed it on a plate. Mum and dads weren't millionaires and said, yeah, you know, you're inheriting it from us. No, he, wasn't, he didn't even have exams. I mean, he suffered dyslexia and he could barely um, make things out. And, you know, everything was a jumble. So he, uh, well, from what I could read of it, he took exams but didn't do any good. Uh, so he left school at 16, finished school, and he went to start his own business. Um, his first business was a magazine called Student. But from there, he went on to be what he is today and do what he does today. And, um, you know, it's not impossible. Otherwise, people wouldn't be doing it. It's not impossible. And with no qualifications whatsoever. And I was looking at some of his, um, what he said about it all. And he is really a good inspiration for people who struggle to achieve or people who simply, for whatever reasons, don't want to go down the GCSE route. Because at the end of the day, um, you don't go down the GCSE route normally is because you say you don't want to, that it's because you've got issues with doing that kind of thing and worries about that sort of thing. So if you can't do it, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But uh, I just want to read um, a quote that I saw with Richard Branson. Um, what he said actually about making goals. He said, don't make your goals about money or things that you can buy but things that you can learn or things that interest you. Which I thought was really good. How true is that? You know, if you forget um, materialistic things and money and that and concentrate on what you're interested in and follow those things because it will take you anywhere. It will keep you going. And he also said, whether you get the grade you wanted or not none if you do what you love and what you're naturally good at it will take you far in life and now that is true that is very true so yeah i've gone from um, how you can take gcse's which obviously you tutor your child along the curriculum and then you you know, can enter them for GCSEs. Same with an online course, you do all your courses online and enter GCSEs. Got, bearing in mind, you've got to get your own, um, find your own exam centre. Um, a lot of them are private schools, public schools. And you've also got to find somebody to mark your coursework. Apparently that can be a bit more difficult from what I've read. I don't know anybody who's done it. It's just what I've read and things I've looked into when I was thinking about Sean. And obviously you can still go to college. If you've not got any GCSEs, it just means that you have got to, um, well, try and get yourself up to the level if, and expect to take them at college. Because if you can prove that you're at that level, they will run you some GCSEs alongside your college work now um, the one thing I'm not sure about is um, when you're homeschooled and you if you're looking to get a place in college whether that is free 
it's funded free like it is with children who come out of school or whether because you've been home educated you're expected to pay for it I'm not 100% sure on that that's something probably I would look up if I needed to nearer the time um, I don't know whether Sean would want to go to college it's way too early in the year she's only in year seven it's way too early to worry about things like that um, she's behind, behind me I was going to say again behind you again College, college. <laughs> college is where you um, study different things, all sorts of things, job things. But then I, I like the idea myself of, um, um, I can say assessments, not assessments. Um, oh dear, words, they do go through me. Apprenticeships, oh, apprenticeships. I do like the idea of that or doing NVQs. That's quite good. You can do things easily and get NVQs. So yeah, basically that's it really. So yeah, you can take GCSEs. It would be expensive, be quite costly, I think, to do that and depending on how many you wanted to do. Um, but you don't have to do them either. As I've just said, you don't have to do them. There are ways of getting into things and doing things and plenty of jobs that don't take GCSEs that you don't have to worry about. Um, most of my children haven't got, they have got some, but nothing high or anything, but they've all got good jobs. All got good jobs. Don't. So yeah. That's that for today then. I hope that's helped a little bit. Um, they're all things, you know, areas for you to look into, depending on what your child wants. Um, she gave me a picture. I don't know if she wants me to show that to you. I will anyway, because I'm assuming she does. She's got a North Korea one and we've got an upside down one there. What was that one? John's versions, China. <laughs> so, yeah. That's that then. So um, tomorrow, I might come on with a bit of homesteading things tomorrow, a bit of garden stuff tomorrow, actually, because we've had two days of homeschooling. So I might come on with a bit of gardening tomorrow. So I'm going to love and leave you, or I'll be here all day, and I shall see you tomorrow. So take care, everybody. Bye.